All right, so to me, this is what this is all about. The access. I'm here at uh, John Brandon's house. He's building a bear hawk. Inviting his home, his personal garage, to show you what he's building. I'll show you what's going on here at John's garage. Coming up. Hi guys, um, my name is John Brannon and uh, welcome to my shop here. And uh, this is a Bearhawk LSA build. So it's the light sport model of the Bearhawk. Um, and I'm doing it as a planes build airplane. Um, this is my second airplane project. Um, I guess actually technically it's probably my third, but my first was an RV6 uh, that my father and I built. And we built that between uh, 1996 and 2006 and have it flying and we continue to fly it regularly. And then uh, my second project, I started an RV4 tail kit and I got the tail kit built. And, uh, but when it came time to continue pursuing that kit, I decided I wanted to kind of do something different than another RV. And I've always liked the Super Cubs and Cubs and those type of airplanes and started looking into uh, many of the different Cub kits and plans built airplanes. And, and as, I, as I hunted around, I found the Bearhawk model and started looking at a four place and, and thinking that direction. And then as I really started evaluating my mission of local flying and and just kind of some fun, fun sport flying and really wanting to learn new skills. I, I kind of settled in that the LSA might be a good plans build airplane. So let's, you know, s steer away from the kit and um, try to start building all my own parts. And it was a little bit simpler. It doesn't have flaps. And so the wings a little bit simpler and a little bit smaller on the airframe. And um, you get by with a sm little bit smaller engine than the bigger airplanes. And so a little bit more affordable build. And uh, so we, we went that path. And so I'm about three years into my build. And as we'll see here today, I've got my wing spars complete, all my wing ribs complete, and uh, getting ready for a wing assembly. Awesome. So obviously the first step in a plans built or scratch built is getting the plans, reviewing the plans, and then making a material list to order. After that, then you've got some tooling to, to make. So let's talk about that. What did you have to do to create, and you're standing right in front of one thing, yep. but list and name off a few of the things you had to either buy, build, or create to scratch build. Well, one thing with the scratch build has been a lot of tooling. And to me, that's been a fun part of the scratch build is learning what tools are there. And I'll say the Bearhawk community on the forums and, and even other airplane models I've pulled from, you know, Sonic scratch builders, Zenith scratch grill builders, and seen tools they're doing. But some of the things, one of the first things you do is you got to build your uh, wing ribs is uh, wing rib form blocks. And uh, we've got some, some form blocks here and so we can kind of show you where you start out with a, a, uh, a master uh, uh, rib template. And this is made from a full scale Mylar that comes with the plans uh, that Bob Barrows, the designer, sends a, uh, a full scale Mylar. You can trace it out and, and onto wood and cut it out of uh, MDF and is what I used. And you can see little drill bushings like where lightning holes go. We mark out all our spar locations and uh, jig pin locations so that every rib will be built with the same uh, same tooling or the, to the same set of tooling holes and then this kind of becomes our master that we use with a like a flush cut router bit to make uh, form blocks and you know to convert that to a form block essentially we're making a copy of it and uh, again you see the same tooling holes we'll put our bend radius on the uh, on the edge mark where our, our flutes might go and we can use this to uh, to, to start you know, with a, a hammer and sandwich our aluminum between them and start hammering out your ribs and before long you know starting with nose ribs and and main ribs and holding that upside down there you know, get a, a nose rib and a main rib and, and you can come back with trailing edge ribs and before long you've got your uh, you know you've got a rib together I see another tool uh, informers here on the edge of the table what we got here to uh, yeah so here. So when you're you're forming a rib, we'll we'll talk. This is a this is a tool that I think originally came out in some of the uh, RV um, uh, newsletters, but it's a uh, it's a, a rib straightener, flange straightener. So when you you hammer out a rib such as this, you're after you hammer it out, your flange is only going to be you know it's not going to be quite to 90 degrees yet, and you need a good way to to get past due to spring back. You need to get past 90 degrees with it. So this is a tool that you can take your ribs, and with the undercut sized, you can just go in and 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 pull your ribs through there and it'll help get you a, a nice uh, 90 degree um, 90 degree rib um, flange there on your rib and then you can come back with fluting pliers to put these little flutes um, there these little indentions that helps shrink the uh, metal on this outer edge to so you get a nice straight rib 
on a table when you're done. And after that, you got another here set that, of dies. After that, you got a set of dies. How many? How many different sizes did you have to create to? Uh, well, let's see. We have. We can count them here. We had one, two. These are the same. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different sizes of uh, of dies um, for for flanging the holes. And again, this is uh, not my particular idea, but learning from previous builders on the uh, Bearhawk forums and, and other places that had some router methods. And using a router, we were able to take uh, some MDF and you can see where we cut holes in and put a, put a 45 degree chamfer on it and then make a, uh, a, um, a male plug for that. And so what you can do is put your, your rib inside, lining up your jig pins and, and tightening it together and or kind of sandwich it in there. And then with a press, you're able to, to, to press it down and, and you get your, uh, get your flanges and all your ribs. So another big piece of the puzzle here I see on your table is a brake. Yes, this Talk is to a, us about that for a minute. Yeah, this is a homemade eight foot brake. So building a bear hawk or really any metal airplane, you're probably gonna need some kind of a brake that's in the eight foot range for, you know, bending wing spars, which we can talk about in a little bit. Um, but this is a, it's called a Dave's break. If you Google that, you'll probably find it. I, I found it kind of through looking at some Zenith scratch built uh, uh, articles on when I was looking into bending breaks. Um, but it's, it's something really, you can build this in a weekend, really. It's, it's a couple of pieces of uh, just uh, steel angle iron. It's three pieces of steel angle iron. You, uh, you go in and uh, um, rate, take one of them and radius it off to your desired bend radius. In my case, I used a, about an eighth inch radius by uh, kind of grinding that off. And uh, use a, a piano hinge, um, or you could, you know, to uh, tie the pieces together. But the way this works, you just take your, your part you're gonna bend, and you raise up the foot, slide your piece of metal in it. You can clamp it down with these bolts through your table. And then when you're ready to bend, you just lift up and give it a good push. And uh, now you're able to form your spars. And in the case of the Bearhawk, these are 032 uh, 2024 T3 um, spar material. Um, the, the longest ones are right at about eight feet. And it takes some, takes some oomph to get that last little bit, but I will say that this, you know, this, this served me well um, as a break. So it was, a, again, a case of borrowing from a different, different design and builders, but kind of going to those resources out there to see what we needed. And about how much did it cost you to source the material to build? I think the, the whole thing was probably $100, $150 tops maybe. So I was able to buy the, uh, the steel from a local scrap yard. Um, and uh, so I was able to save a little bit of money there and they had the piano hinge as well. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's actually a stainless steel piano hinge and bought some other just uh, a steel channel to make a, a handle and bolted the whole thing together. And uh, like I said it's, it's served me well for about a $100, $150 break. And about how long did it take you to build once you got the materials in the house? Once I had materials here in house, it was like I said, probably just a weekend project. You know, the course of uh, a Saturday or Sunday afternoon, the, the steel was a little rusty, so I had to. It got stored outside uh, at the store I bought it from, so I had to. Most of my time was getting the rust off of it before I spray paid some uh, some Krylon on it. To, so, uh, so after a weekend investment of time, you can start bending metal. Weekend investment of time, you can start bending metal and start big your big spars. Hey, before we get too deep into this, let me thank our sponsors that make all this possible. Great companies like Airworks, Acme Aero, AirTech Coatings, Kit Plane Parts, Stoll Creek Aviation, DeLand Sport Aviation Showcase, Edge Performance. So take a moment after this video to say hello to all of them and remember to check out the affiliate links in the description below. And remember, just build it. Let's get back to it. Check out our podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Podbean, and search EAC Aviation Podcast on YouTube. All right, so another little helpful tip here. Yeah, another tip, if you notice, um, each of our ribs have a stiffening angle, and when we look at the spars in a little bit, you'll see there are a lot of angles, little stiffening angles uh, made out of aluminum sheet. Um, and something I picked up from the uh, EAA Hint for Home Builders was the use of a paper cutter um, as a metal shear, which when I first saw that, I kind of had my doubts, but I thought I'd give it a try. And this is a piece of uh, 32 thousandths, 2024 teeth of scrap that we thought we'd just show how you can wind it up in a paper cutter and, and shear down and you can get a nice uh, nice straight sheared edge on it. Uh, we were able to, you can see where I can mark out constant lines. So if I'm doing a, a series of parts that I want them all a constant width, I can, I can use the grid on the paper cutter to, uh, to line my parts up and, and make them all nice and even and be able to quickly repetitively make a lot of little angle blanks.
and uh, works works good. And then we can just use a small a smaller brake here, this little Harbor Freight brake. We can then put our parts in to uh, to bend our angles up, just using this small brake. And that's just a a quick tip to not have to use a hand shear and wear your wear your forearms out on every single every single rib. So John, talk to me about how you formed and cut your. Um your spars, because I know there's several different ways. One is with snips, which is like, I actually did that, which hurts your hand, yeah, but gets the job done. Gets the job done, yeah, it builds up your forearm too. Yeah, which method what, did you choose? What I actually did is I used a, uh, a straight edge and a uh, just a trim bit on a router that would follow that, that straight edge. And so, yes, you lose about a, in my case, it was a quarter inch diameter bit, so you lose a quarter inch of material, but I was able to, to follow that, that straight edge down and, and use the router to cut my, my uh, spar blanks uh, to the correct width. Um, and and then uh, put them in the uh, the break that we discussed to, uh, um, to to bend them up. And the bending is a little bit of a trial and error. And you need the spar to match your rib profile. And so I, I took a couple of strips that were about an inch or two wide that were cut to the correct width. And then you, you play around with what setback do I need in the uh, in the break to get an, an angle that when it's all said and done and assembled with my ribs, that it would it will fit the ribs. And so once I had that dimension worked out, I was able to bend up. In this case, there are four, four spar channels. You have a, an inboard and outboard, and they're spliced together here at the middle of the wing. And so the spar started out with uh, uh, forming the, uh, the channels. And then uh, you buy some uh, the cap strip material, which is the longest ones are uh, not quite 12 feet long. There, there are three of them in this spar, two on the front side, one on the back. And uh, using those cap strips, um, you get those located and drilled up and splice the spars together, splice things in the middle, and then you come back with more of those little angles to, to come back and give your... Uh, let, let me uh, back up just, just a second. I'm curious because these spars are quite long. Is this, I don't know, 12, 16 feet? How, how long is, are they? Um, they're right at just under 16 feet. So you're, you have a 16-foot so. spar and a break that's eight. Right. How so did you accomplish so you have the flange? Two, two, two pieces. So the, each spar channel is, is two pieces. Okay. So one goes from the outboard to and is here. There over, is there overlap in the no, middle? No, it's, it's a butt splice. And okay. we can kind of show the, we have a, a butt splice. You can see where the, uh, the inboard spar and the outboard spar, and there's a, uh, a splice plate fitting through there. And then we have kind of temporarily bolted in the, uh, uh, what will eventually be the wing strut attached fitting uh, through that location. Okay, so spars just fit onto the So they just fit the, the, the size of the brake yeah. to be just longer than the longest spar section. Okay which was one of the rear spar. I don't remember exactly which one, but it's one of the, uh, I think it's the rear outboard has the longest piece. Okay. All right, and then this this spar, the design, what like most spars are, is uh, all solid AN riveted. Did you uh, squeeze these or buck these, or I, how did you accomplish that? I, I bucked these. Um, we, t we talked earlier about my previous RV experience, and those are 332nd rivets, which we used a big squeezer for those. These are 532nd rivets, and with a 3X rivet gun, was able to uh, buck these by hand, and uh, that was what was recommended by uh, Mr. Barrows, the designer, and it, it worked out well. Okay. Are you having fun? I'm having a blast with it. And uh, it's, it's been, like I said, three years, and when I sit back and look at all the parts we've built and what's been accomplished, it's it's great to see all these parts, but the exciting part is what's next. And that's, um, I'm now ready to begin my wing assembly where instead of just seeing a pile of parts, we'll, we'll be able to take the ribs and pop them into spars and, and, uh, and, and get something that starts to really look like airplane parts. And that three years isn't three years every single day, six days a week. That is on the weekend here and the night here that, and the evening there, right? That's the weekend. I, I'm a family guy. I've got three young kids and, and that, that aspect of life takes priority over the hobby, but I, I get out here for half an hour. In fact, one of my builders is here. This is Luke. My, uh, he's been Hi. one of my assistants, and he's learned, he's learned and helped out with this as well. And we get some time with that. But it's, it's spending you know, a half hour here, you know, a half hour there. Maybe I have a free hour on a weekend and, uh, and go out and work. And you know, people say this, but there's a lot of truth to do something every day, even if it's open the plans and figure out what you're going to do the next day. If you can keep the momentum going and, and work through it, you can find that in this case is what you see here is, you know, about six, four by 12 sheets of aluminum, and then a couple of smaller sheets of some plate material and, you know, some MDF for some tooling and, and a willingness to learn. And to me, that's what's so exciting is the learning and the figuring out how do I make this? How do I put this together? And using the resources that are out there to, on YouTube or on, you know forums and things like that it's it's been a it's been a great 
a great project. Check out our podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Podbean, and search EAC Aviation Podcast on YouTube. Remember to like and subscribe. Check us out on Instagram and Facebook. I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.